What's going on guys, King Strats here, back in another video on the channel, and today we are back with another, I guess this is an episode of a world breakfast tour. This all started last week because I made a full English breakfast, and the people in the comments I asked, and they kind of did a little straw poll, um, said, do you want me to start doing breakfast from different places around the world? What other countries besides the United States, if you're not here. You might do a couple of US too, because there are some regional stuff, but basically what countries eat for breakfast. So today we are going to the Philippines and what this is, well, I gotta break this one down a little bit. Before I get started, just bear with me if I mispronounce any words. Um, this is all coming off of my own research from either people or the internet. So the Philippines, a popular breakfast dish is known as a sea log. Um, I hope I didn't mispronounce that, but what it is, is basically it's a portmanteau. If you don't know what that means, it's like a, a take a bunch of words and make it into a small one um, of garlic fried rice and eggs with different kinds of meat. Now, the most popular variations I saw were with tapas, which is like a uh, meat, a cured meat. Uh, I saw one with hot dogs, actually. Hot dogs are very popular in the Philippines, uh, used like a meat, almost like Spam is as well. And I couldn't make either of those. So we went to the next best possible thing, which <laughs> why wouldn't I take a crack at one of the Philippines popular signature discs of chicken adobo? So that is what we did. What we made was garlic fried rice with the eggs as well as chicken adobo. Um, it's my first time ever making it. I think it turned out pretty good. It smells like I've had it before, so we shall find out. But um, basically, when I talk to other people, I have some Filipino friends, they said a lot of times it's usually uh, rice, and a lot of times I'll turn it into garlic fried rice, which is what we did, egg, and whatever protein they had the night before. I actually grew up with a kid uh, who was Filipino, and it was very similar to that. So let me take you through the process of the chicken adobo first. First thing we did, we got some chicken thighs. Now I have boneless, skinless. Um, the ones that I've seen, the variations, I have seen some with that, but the ones I've seen uh, more popular were the bone in, but I freestyle. <laughs> so we have boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which we marinated uh, with some rice wine vinegar, some light soy sauce, uh, a little bit of sugar. I didn't use too much because, you know, I don't like to cook with too much sugar. And about 77 pounds of garlic as well as some pepper and bay leaves. We let that sit in the fridge. I think it was about three hours when it was all said and done. Once we took that out, we took the chicken out and we put it in our pan to sear it, uh, to kind of brown it off, give it a nice little crust to it. Once we had that done on both sides, we took that same marinade and we put it inside of our pan and let that simmer down for about uh, 20 minutes until the sauce kind of reduced down into this nice thick, mm, it, I wish you had smell-o-vision. After that, we had some rice, which I had cooked the day before knowing I was gonna do this, and we let that sit in the fridge for now uh, a day, um, kind of to give the effect of using leftover rice. So that's what we did. Um, we took some oil. I have some, use a neutral oil if you can. Um, I use canola oil, and we put that inside of our pan, about two tablespoons, and we added some garlic to that. Keep the pan really low and just let that garlic infuse the oil. You're making garlic oil, basically. Um, now, if you're using bigger chunks of garlic, which I didn't, I would remove them at this time and put them back in later when the garlic oil is done. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes, really low, the lower the better, um, until that oil starts to get infused with the garlic. Then we added our rice to it, made sure we cooked that off just a little bit so it just got coated the rice, and then we spread it out in our wok and let it sit for about five minutes till it started to crisp up a little bit. And then we stirred it up, repeated the same process again. This sounds intricate, doesn't it? It's really not. Until about three to five minutes again. And then we plated that off, fried up. I had two eggs, but one of them started to pop, so I added a third. That's why there's three here. You can see two, and then it turns into three. That's why one of them already started to like bust the yolk. But that is the finished product. Um, they are speaking to my own soul, if you ask me, because I'm a person... I'm all about eggs and rice. Like, I love it. Like, it is one of my things. Um, similar in Hawaii, uh, it's white rice uh, and spam with eggs, but it's kind of the same vibe, like kind of an island vibe. I, I just, I don't know. I just can't wait to try this because I love garlic. And you, I fried my rice in garlic, bro. Oh, I added some green onion in there. I didn't say that. It's in there, though. I swear. What should I do? Should I, like, let's just try to, let's, yeah, let's just try this rice. I like the crust on this already, man. Can y'all, I know y'all be hearing me drooling in the background. Mike picks it up. I would just eat this. Mmm, that's so simple. I should have put like even more garlic in there. Like next time, like 27 cloves. But not bad for the first go-round. Let's try the chicken a little. 
there we go nice and tender it braised in that liquid so that's what we're looking at right now y'all eat stuff like this for breakfast all the time over there that's the dub we got it all wrong here with breakfast let me bust this yolk open real quick let me get some of this yolk in here let me get some of that yolk and that fried egg i've seen it with scrambled eggs too but i know i like my fried eggs i like that yolky yolk getting all up in there all right, man, forks are so whack bro hold on too late there's where it is all right let's go all right let me go here let me get a little piece of that let me get some of that fried rice in here uh, i hate forks forks are so whack I mean, a million times yes. Everything about it. Everything about it. Every, I can only imagine there's somebody like really who can, like who, who grew up cooking stuff like this, cooks it because I made this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mmm. The chicken too, bro. I'm sorry. Now, I've had chicken and double a few times. It's even better the next day. And that's what it's all about. You know? Now, I grew up in a household that people don't waste food either. So this is just, to me, I would I, if I would have known about this, is like, I would have been doing this. Especially like on like a Saturday morning, right? Mom's cook. I don't know what she made, some kind of chicken. We always have rice. So I'm an egg, bro. I didn't really get put on stuff like this until I was older. Another thing that was popular, I looked in a few stores, I couldn't find it. I would have to go to a specialty market to get it. In the Philippines, they use banana ketchup. It's exactly what it sounds like. Instead of using a tomato, now, you can get it in bottles. I've seen it. I just was like looking for it real quick. Couldn't find it. But more or less, instead of using a tomato, they use bananas. They make a ketchup with it. And it's like really sweet. I've seen two different variations. The ones I've seen the most, um, the bottle... There's like a green, like the label, but like red writing and like yellow on it. And it's red ketchup, but it's made from bananas. Now, I believe they actually use like dye to make it red, but I've also seen one that doesn't have dye in it. And it has more of like a almost orange, like dark yellow, orange kind of color to it. Either way, I don't like bananas and it's good. The first time I had it, I was with my friend and I grew up like I really don't like bananas, like for real. Then I just had some eggs and I put ketchup on it, had ketchup, so I used it. So I didn't know. And then I kind of realized later on, I was like, I just ate banana ketchup. And then because I was a kid, I wouldn't eat it after that. You know, that rice, like the little crunchy pieces of garlic in there, and the rice kind of crunched up. It's such a simpler fried rice. 
like as far as the amount of ingredients in it but it's really good all of it man I could eat breakfast. I keep food like this all the time. Mm. You know how I am. Just give me some really dope seasoned chicken, a fried egg, and some rice. Some variation of it. I'm all here for it. So, upon my research, kind of gonna go through like what I've been doing. Because I've been looking into this because. It's all pretty new to me. So, there's a lot of different websites and, and polls and, you know, different articles that kind of go through like 50 different countries and, and types of breakfasts that they eat. And a lot of this stuff, I think you'll notice as we go on, especially like all the people here that are watching from the U.S. You'll notice that, now some places aren't, but a lot of the food is, is not what we would typically call breakfast food. And truthfully, I prefer this kind of breakfast food. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love me some waffles, some eggs, some pancakes, some cereal, and all that stuff. But I think because my taste buds and, like, who I am is more set towards, like, you know, savory, this kind of stuff to me is like a dope-ass breakfast. If you're from another country, even if you're from here, even if you're from the U.S., you're from Canada, where are you from? Put in the comments, let me know. Let me know what you eat, like, regionally, or even just in your house. Like, what is your breakfast like? Is it, like, now, American-wise speaking, here, like, basis breakfast stock, you know, you eating cereal? Um, because even though I'm doing a world thing, in the U.S. alone, because it's so diverse, there are a lot of different regions that their breakfast is different. Like, around here, now speaking specifically in the Northeast and the tri-state area, so like New York City, you know, where I live, the county of New Jersey, and like Connecticut, like, it's right on the border of New York City, so we call it the tri-state area. And around here, like bagels are king and i think it's because the way we live our lives is kind of fast paced people just like to kind of go to a bagel store and don't in the morning and just like keep it moving now there's different variations with the bagels not just like bagels and cream cheese um you know i know a lot of you probably got really popular like the whole bacon egg and cheese like one word kind of thing um taylor ham egg and cheese so egg sandwiches on hard rolls or bagels um and also, like, donuts. A lot of people go to, like, Dunkin' Donuts and places like that for breakfast. You know. Anything that can be eaten or picked up real quick, eaten in a car, is very big around here. And it's not like that in the rest of the country. The craziest thing that I realized, you know, if you're new here, you may not know this. You know, I don't like to, like, oh, I did, like, but uh, I went to college in the Midwest. Um, I went to school in Iowa, and... Anybody around here knows that Iowa is the furthest thing, culturally, from New Jersey that you can get. Much more of a calmer, relaxed, spread out, there's not a lot of people, um, you know, small town kind of vibe. Now, I went to school in a college town, so it isn't as small town as the small towns in Iowa. And when I say small towns, some of the kids I played on, like, my team with... They went to schools where their graduating class was like seven people. And I'm not exaggerating. Like small towns. Towns, you know, the popular saying out there was that you don't even have a stoplight in your town. Like there's no traffic lights. Just stop signs. And I visited a few. It's not an exaggeration. You know, the towns are really, really spread out. And there might be like a strip where there's like a couple of stores. And that's it. Um, so it was big culture shock for me, but the craziest thing that I noticed was there wasn't a bagel store in sight. I never saw, I just like a, like 
It was rare. Am my college town? No bagels. Which it's kind of made me realize the world's a lot bigger than, you know, New Jersey. But it was weird to me at first because I'd never seen that. So I was very confused. I'm like, what the hell y'all eat for breakfast? I still don't really know. Most people eat breakfast at home. And the thing that I never saw until I got out there, which is really popular out there, biscuits and gravy. You cannot find biscuits and gravy in my area. And when I say gravy, for people who aren't familiar with it, it's like a sausage gravy. Like it's white. It's not the gravy you would think of on like mashed potatoes. Some people think that, but no. It's a white gravy with sausage pieces, almost like ground sausage. And I never had it until I was in college. I never saw it. I didn't know it was a thing. Until I got out there. And we went, i never forget, it was like my freshman year, like, in football camp. Um, right when we got out of camp and school started, is when the dorms start serving breakfast, you know, like the dining halls. Our school had like, I don't know, seven dining halls, something like that. There was a pretty big, whatever amount of them, but. It was like buffet style. So, you know, you walk in in a whole bunch of different places. And my teammate I was with at the time, he was like, and he said it funny. I never forget because I never heard it like this. They had biscuits. I was like, oh, dope, they got biscuits. So he, he was before me and he was like, you know, let me get biscuits and some of that sausage. Sausage. I can't say that. Sausage. It sounds so weird. Sausage gravy. And I'm like, in my, because I didn't, like, you don't start realizing accents and stuff until you leave. And I was like, sausage? The fuck is a sausage? He meant sausage. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's sausage gravy? Because it's white. I've never seen white gravy before. But it was a thing. So, all right, say less. I'm going to try it. Pretty damn good. But we would never do that around here because people don't sit down and eat breakfast in the morning around here. Most people, because they get up, they got to go to work early as hell. Traffic. You got a lot of traffic. So if you got work at 830, your commute sometimes is crazy because if you get on one of these highways in the morning, sometimes you get a little jammed up. So people usually... We'll just stop at like a donut place or a bagel shop. There's bagel shops are like, there's one every block in this in and around here. And that's not an exaggeration. It's like pizza places. There are just thousands of them. So, I just wasn't used to that, you know. Now, I know in the South, the Southern breakfast and stuff like that, they got some different stuff. Um, grits are real popular in the South. They're not that popular in the Northeast unless you're black. And if you're black, you ate grits more than likely growing up. Um... Most people in the South eat grits all the time. Shrimp and grits is really popular any time of the day. Um, but growing up, you know, I ate grits because I'm black. None of my friends that I'm, when I moved to the summer ate grits. I didn't even know what them were. A lot of people, like, I was like, yeah, nah, I'm not grits, man. My, my black friends, obviously, you know, we all knew. When you talk to someone like my, my Hispanic or, or like white friends or, you know, and they're like, what is grits? And you can't explain it when you're young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you be like, grits is like like grits, bro. Because <laughs> they're like, is it like oatmeal? I'm like, kind of, but nah. You know, and you know, you just keep going on and on. Now, so I'm thinking of maybe doing some, like, American kind of stuff, too. Except for avocado toast. I'm not doing that. I don't like avocado. We won't do that here. But, you know, depending... There are some countries that do like a porridge, um, like oatmeal, um, kind of kind of deal. Um, I know some of the Nordic countries, like Finland, I believe, had like a like a porridge. Um, but some countries don't even really eat breakfast. Like it's not like it's just like I think it's Italy that it was like just like it said espresso and sometimes they have like some bread, you know, maybe like some jam on it, like, you know, something like that. Um, Cuba was that too with coffee. Um, I think Spain was like churros, which, what? <laughs> like, hold up. Y'all eat churros for breakfast? It said churros and chocolate. 
sign me up for that. But like I said, if there's some place like your country or, or your like, you know, maybe your ethnicity or whatever that you do a certain kind of breakfast, you want to see me have that, like write it down. Because I've just been looking into stuff. Philippines are kind of a natural thing for me. When I saw it, I was like, oh, the fried rice and egg, like say less. Obviously, I said the Hawaiian breakfast, so I've done that, but we can do it again, kind of just to keep the, the series thing. Um, But there are some, now, I didn't mention this yesterday too. When I saw on the 50 countries, one of them was Vietnam, and the dish was pho. Like it said pho, so I, I could have done an episode like that yesterday. Um, but it was actually pho. You know? A lot of like the Middle Eastern or African countries have like some sort of like dough, whether it be like a fried dough or like a rolled dough or like a baked dough. Now, I've seen when you make a dough into like a sort of cake. So, I found it really interesting. I love different cultures and kind of learning how people... There's a lot of other ones that do like rice too. So, you know, I'm, I'm coming for those. Um, for my real one still watching, I'll give you one. Because was, it was between that and this one today. I was going to do Costa Rica. That's going to be done. Um, I actually found a Costa Rican restaurant uh, around here. So, I might do that. But... It's a dish called Gallo Pinto. Gallo Pinto. Translated, it, it, it means like like uh, rooster spots. Like rooster spots. Like that's what it means. Um, but it's like a rice and beans. With rice. You know. And I've seen different variations. But I have like plantain, some of them. Um, other little breakfast things. So. Listen. If you eat rice for breakfast, I'm coming over. That's all. I will do that all day. Like, again, pancakes, waffles, dope. Dope. You know. French toast. I say that with quotation marks because we call it French toast, but other places don't. Um, do they eat French toast in France? I know they know for breakfast. France was literally bread, crusty bread. Maybe like some jam or something. You know, you know French bread, if you're familiar with French bread, it very much has like a, like, you know. So, we're gonna do that though. Kinda want to give you guys like a little bit so like you can weigh in. You know, I'll start writing things down on my board. Um, but yeah, the sea log platter, different kinds. Um, I was gonna do the hot dog one, I really was, but I want to do something like, like, I want to make, I honestly, I want to make chicken adobo. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, like I did. And that was pretty damn good. That's a breakfast, bro. Garlic fried rice is like, why the f did I have not been making that? Like, I love garlic. I'm sweating garlic right now. I don't care. I ain't got nobody. Here we go. So, excuse me. Damn, that was good. I'm trying, like, picking at nothing, bro. W. Um, anyway, that, that's going to be the end of the video. Um, we'll be back. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do tomorrow, but let me know if you like the whole breakfast thing. Let me know if you got some suggestions and stuff like that. Maybe we'll do another, like, when we finish with breakfast, we'll move on to, like, dinner or lunches or just, like, every country's national dish. You know, like a popular dish in different countries. What's the one here? Burgers? <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. So let me know. You know, I always take input. I love you guys. We'll be back tomorrow. More content. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.